Welcome everybody to Tino's time and it's finally finally that time of the year baby fantasy football is back and it's my favorite time of the year I love fantasy football it gives me something else to root for even though I love my Chicago Bears as you guys know if you know your boy Tino diehard Bears fan but Fantasy football throughout the last 10 years has been something that I've always done and I've always loved. And last year, if you didn't notice and you didn't see, your boy Tino was with you all season long, helping you set your fantasy lineups every single week. And this year, I'm back and I'm back to help you to win your league and help you conquer all your friends and take home that trophy. Last year, if you watched and you did, you only heard my voice. I was on Spotify, I was on Anchor, I was on a bunch of different platforms. But now, if you, in the past year, if you've kept up on Tino's Time Wrestling and everything going on in the baseball world, you've known I've been on YouTube doing wrestling and baseball. And that's not going to change. Your boy Tino is going to be on YouTube helping you with your fantasy football lineups every single week. So let's not waste any time and let's get ready for a week one preview. Fantasy football, like I said, is back. I'm just so hyped and so excited. I love fantasy football, like I said. So let's not waste any more time and let's get into the headlines for week one. Saquon Barkley is close to being cleared for week one. If you don't remember last year, Saquon Barkley sadly tore his ACL versus the Chicago Bears after being tackled. And it was one of the worst injuries I saw watching live. I hate seeing big guys get hurt, so hopefully Saquon can get in the lineup this week, and for all the people that were able to get him at possibly number two or three, or even one guy in my league got him in the second round because all of us idiots decided not to draft him, hopefully that doesn't, that doesn't come back to bite us in the butt, but Saquon is almost back, and that's good for the New York Giants, especially for Daniel Jones that needs to have a good season or he could be on his way out of the New York Giants. Tyrod Taylor is named the starter for the Houston Texans. All offseason, we've had claims about Sean Watson and all of those female girls and all the, all the actions that they're accusing him of, and it looks like Deshaun Watson will not be starting week one, and that means Tyrod Taylor will be starting for the Houston Texans. And we'll get into that a little bit later and how I think that affects guys like Brandon Cooks, and all the guys that are on the Houston Texans. And I only said Brandon Cooks because honestly, he's the only guy I would really start in the fantasy football for the Houston Texans right now. Because until you see them perform on the field, we really don't want to worry. And we can't go into week one worrying about a guy like Tyrod Taylor possibly having, you know, you just don't want to do that. So let's not do that. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But like I said, Fantasy football is back, baby, and I cannot wait to see what happens on Thursday night with the defending Super Bowl champs and the return of Dak Prescott returning from a really awful injury. We had a lot of awful injuries last year. We saw Christian McCaffrey be out a lot of the season. We saw Dalvin Cook get hurt. We saw Dak Prescott. We saw all these guys get hurt, and it was just an awful season for injuries. So, the next thing I want to talk about is some injuries, because sadly, there were some other injury news this past week, and you know, there hasn't been a lot of injury, like, news news for, like, the most part so far. Like I said, there's a lot of guys coming back, but this past week, Justice Hill tore his Achilles for the Baltimore Ravens, and it looks like they will be testing now, and they're going to try to go out and get a, get a guy on free agency to go back up Gus the Boss Edwards, but... That makes Gus the Bus Edwards a number one or possibly a borderline number two running back in fantasy, especially with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is going to have a phenomenal season, and Gus the Bus could easily benefit from that. So if you have Gus the Bus Edwards on your team, you're set. But that's only the that's really honestly the only big injury news coming out so far you'll have to keep an eye out because you know we could see stuff happen throughout the week but hopefully everybody is healthy because going into week one you want to have the team you 
the team you drafted and all the guys that you were relying on and I just hate seeing injuries and you know like they always say the team that you draft will not be the team that you end your season with and they're absolutely right because you don't know what injuries you don't know what guys are going to go off you don't know what guys are going to break out you just have to watch the waiver, waiver wire and do your thing but watching injuries like last year with Christian, Saquon, Dak, all these guys just go out it was just awful so Hopefully we don't talk about as many injuries as we did last year and hopefully we don't talk about as many injuries as we do in my baseball podcast because the injuries in the baseball season is ridiculous. But this isn't about baseball, so let's not talk about any more injuries and let's get into the players to start, sit, and some sleepers and some streamers that you need to put in your lineup if you want to start the season in week one off with a bang because like I said you always want to start week one off and if you messed up in the draft that's okay just like me I did I made a couple bad picks not that they were bad bad picks I just wish I would have got a top tight end but we'll get into that a little bit later because I will be mentioning a lot about my team throughout the season other teams in my league other teams throughout leagues just in general and we're just going to get everything in it because A lot of people last year mentioned that, you know, I gave a lot of good information. I try to give you as much possible information that I can to help you win your league and win your championship because the best thing about fantasy football is bragging rights against your friends and taking it over and being the league bragger and just winning the whole league and taking names and taking taking souls like The Undertaker does. So let's get into starts, sits, and streams for week one to help you set your lineup and win your week. And let's start off with the starts. I'm starting off, my start of the week is Jalen Hurts versus the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons defense is one of the worst defenses in the league, and their secondary last year was not very good. And Jalen Hurts proved that he's going to be a really big name in the NFL, and he get his he gets guys like Deva- Devontae Smith, he gets Miles Sanders, Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz is a tight end people seem to forget about, but only a few years ago, he was a really good tight end. I was able to sna- snag him in one of my drafts, and if he possibly goes off and is a number tight end or a tight end one, that would be deadly. So Jalen Hurts start versus the Falcons because he's got a lot more weapons than he did this year, last year, and the Falcons secondary is not very good, and that game is going to be a shootout. So just start everybody in that game with the Falcons and Eagles. It's just going to be a banger. My second start of the week is Ryan Tannehill versus the Cardinals. Ryan Tannehill had a very good, phenomenal season last year, and he had guys like John U. Smith. He had guys like A.J. Brown. He had guys like Corey Davis. And in the offseason, the Titans went out, and they did lose Corey Davis to the Jets, but they went out and got one of the best wide receivers ever to play in the NFL. They went out and got Julio Jones from the Atlanta Falcons. And Julio Jones with A.J. Brown on the right or left side of him is going to be deadly, guys. That's going to be sick. And that only gives Ryan Tannehill so many more weapons, and not to mention he's got the biggest, baddest running back behind him in Derrick Henry. Guy's going to run for 2,000, hopefully 2,500 2,500 yards because I don't see him stopping. Derrick Henry's going to be a boss. You need to start him every week, but put his quarterback in because versus that Cardinals defense, Ryan Tannehill's going to have a game, and you're going to be feeling good on Sunday being like, hell yeah, I started Ryan Tannehill, and guys with some guys just didn't have some games, and Ryan Tannehill did. My running back starts for the week. It's one guy that everybody picked up off the waiver wire last year. I ended up getting him off the waiver wire, and I did get him in some of my leagues this year. It's James Robinson from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Chase Etty, or not Chase, Travis Ettiman from the Jacksonville Jaguars tore his ACL, and he is out for the season. The Jaguars drafted him. This year in the draft out of Clemson, Trevor Lawrence's best buddy in Clemson. And, you know, those two were going to be really good. But James Robinson had such a good, phenomenal season last year that I could not, I just could not see him not being the starter and not deserving. And he is going to be a top 10 running back. So you should be starting him every week. But this week, start him versus that Texans defense because we talked about it a little bit earlier with Tyrod Taylor. The only guy in the de- on the Texans that I really do trust is Brandon Cook. Cooks, and even then I really don't trust him very much unless you're in like a wide receiver three or a two flex t- league maybe whatever it is I would start him only in those but if it's like a two quarterback two wide receiver league I wouldn't I just try to stay away from the Texans this year because they are a disaster 
Let's talk about my other start for the week for the running backs. I mentioned them a little bit earlier. It's Gus the Bus Edwards. We talked about J.K. Dobbins being out. Justice Hill got out. And that leaves the door wide open for Gus the Bus. Gus the Bus Edwards. They have a phenomenal season this year. So you need to start him versus that Ra- the versus the Raiders on Monday night. Because either that game's going to be a barn burner. And it's going to be back and forth. Or the Ravens are going to come out and ball. And they're going to kick some ass versus the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, for the wide receivers you need to start, it's T. Higgins from the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Minnesota Vikings and Devontae Smith versus the Falcons. Devontae Smith is a rookie. The Philadelphia Phillies moved up in the draft to grab him this season, so that only means that they see something big in him, and he's going to be one of the big stars in the NFL. So I told you to start Jalen Hurts, start Devontae Smith too, because when Jalen Hurts throws it to Devontae Smith, you get double the points, and you always got a stack. Quarterbacks, receivers, quarterbacks and tight ends, even quarterbacks and running backs are good. I always love to stack. I have two stacks in, or I, I, yeah, I do have two stacks in two different leagues. I have Josh Allen and Lamar in one league, and I have Stefan Diggs and Mark Andrews in another league. So if either or I'll be getting points, and I'll be getting double the points. It's just going to suck because, like, this week I face Lamar in one league, so it's like I just, I want Lamar to do good, but I don't know how much I want him to do good because then I'll lose in one league and I'll win in the other, but I, that's fantasy football, guys. That's why you do so many leagues because you love to root for guys and if you don't like to do that just stick to one league but that's also not fun I just I like doing more than one leagues but that's just me so let's get to the tight ends tight ends we've always talked about have always been one of the biggest not problems in the NFL but they've always been one of the hardest positions to choose in fantasy football and this week I'm telling you to start two tight ends one had a really good season last year and one's going to a new team Robert Tanyan versus the Saints. He had a great season last year, and I see that continuing with A.A. Ron back, and he's going to be doing his thing because it's his last dance in Green Bay, and it looks like him and Adams are going to go to new teams. So that look, I just have feel, a feeling Mr. Rogers is going to go off to so start Robin, Robert Tanyan because he's guaranteed to at least get one touchdown. And if not, then you can yell at me next week on the show, and that's okay because I'll deserve it. But I'm telling you to start Tanyan because I trust him. The next tight end you need to start, it's a guy. He went from the Tennessee Titans to the New England Patriots. It's John U. Smith. He is now the tight end for the New England Patriots. And New England Patriots are starting the rookie, Mac Jones. They released Cam a few weeks ago throughout the preseason. And so now it's Mac, Mac Jones's team. And you know about rookies, they always love the tight end. The tight end is one of those positions. He's always built big. He's always an ex-NBA player, it seems. And he could catch the ball. He could leap. He could do big things. And for a rookie, having that guy is going to be very helpful. They also have Hunter Henry. But I just feel like John U. Smith is going to have a better stat line than Hunter Henry. Or they might both even be good tight ends. But right now, I trust Smith just a little bit more. And that's just my opinion. So start Johnny Smith versus the Finns. Because I think the Finns will win this game. But I still think Janu will get in the get in the end zone. And that's all you need from a tight end. Because one touchdown in the end zone is six points. And I'll take that all day long from a tight end. The defense you need to start this week. It's the 49ers versus the Lions. The Lions are getting the Lions' new quarterback is Jared Goff, and you know the Lions' offensive line is not very good. And the 49ers will be getting Nick Bosa back. They're going to be a lot healthier than they were last year. So if you're if I'm you, start the 49ers this year or start the 49ers this week, not this year. I'm sorry. The 49ers will be a good team to start throughout the season, but just this week, starting versus the Lions. Another defense I want to mention for you to start, and a defense you could rely on for the next three weeks, it's the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos play the Giants, the Jaguars, and I forget who they play week three. I'll I'll get to that, and I'll mention it before, before next week. I'll let you know who the Giants play week three. I just can't think of it off the top of my head, but the Broncos have a really good three-game stretch. And if that if you're looking for a defense to stream for the next three weeks, go pick up the Broncos right now. But let's get to the sits and let's start about let's start about let's talk about the quarterbacks 
and all the t all the guys that you need to sit this week because they're just not going to be productive. The first guy I want to talk about is Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger, he's getting up there in age and Last year, the Bills' defense was deadly, and at the end of the season, they only got better through it as the season went on, and now that they get a full season, it's going to be even better. So if I'm you, go start, or no, go don't, don't start, I'm sorry, don't start Ben Roethlisberger versus the Bills. If you have the Bills' defense, start the Bills' defense, because I think Ben Roethlisberger will easily throw a pick six, and even if that game gets a little out of hand, a pick six gets you eight points, and hey, that could make your defense jump up on top. And that's all you need. So, that sit ben, Big Ben, but start the Bills defense. The next guy you need to sit is Jared Goff versus the 49ers. I talked about starting the 49ers defense, and that means you need to sit Jared Goff. Jared Goff is coming over from the Los Angeles Rams to the Detroit Lions. And not saying anything bad about the Detroit Lions, but they don't have the same weapons as the LA Rams do. And I just don't see him going off and doing what he did in the Rams. And, you know, Matt Stafford would be a good start versus the Bears this week. I love my Chicago Bears. I just don't know how that's going to go. I don't want to get my hopes up too high. So I would definitely start Matt Stafford over Jared Goff. And to be honest, I don't even know why you would have Jared Goff on your team in week one. But if you do and you weren't able to get a top quarterback, just don't start Jared Goff. Go out and get Ryan Tannehill, like I said. If you have Jalen Hurts, maybe go. I, you just, just don't start Jared Goff. The running backs, I want you to sit this week. It's Josh Jacobs versus the Ravens on Monday night. Not saying that Josh Jacobs is not going to have a good season because he's going to have a good season. He's going to get a lot of carries and he's going to get a lot of yards and he's a monster and he's going to get some touchdowns. I've had him a lot since he's come in the NFL. But versus the Ravens defense on Monday night, I don't know if I really want to have Josh Jacobs sitting there on Monday night wishing for him to get 20 points and him not even be able to get 10 and I'm sitting there and I'm like damn it I wish I would have been able to start somebody else at running back and it's just one of those things where you're obviously going to start Lamar you're going to start Andrews you're going to start Gus the boss you're going to start Carr you're going to start you know guys like Darren Waller you're going to start guys like that but Josh Jacobs is the one guy from that game on Monday night I'm really worried about also, the other guy I'm really worried about on Sunday night, it's David Montgomery from the Chicago Bears. I love David Montgomery. He's a beast. He did phenomenal things last year. But the Bears offensive line is awful, and I can admit that as a Chicago Bear fan. It's not very good, and it's one of those things that I just do not want to have on Sunday night. David Montgomery putting up a stinker because if Andy Dalton throws some interceptions because Aaron Donald, remember Aaron Donald is still on that left side, on the other side of those offenses, and Aaron Donald scares the hell out of me. So I'm just really worried about the Chicago Bears, and honestly, until Justin Fields comes in the game or he gets put into the starting lineup for the Chicago Bears, Bears. other than Allen Robinson maybe Daryl Mooney if you if you need like a deep flex or wide receiver three I'm just really worried not saying that David Montgomery can't get production I just want to see the Bears come out and play and see how things go and see how that offensive line works before I can continue continuously trust David Montgomery so if you have better options go out and sit David Montgomery if you're able to get James Robinson late if you're able to get other guys, maybe a DeAndre Swift, go start, you know, Gus the Boss, like I said. Go start somebody else other than David Robinson. The two wide receivers I want you to sit this week, it's Odell Beckham Jr. versus the Chiefs and Kenny Galladay versus the Broncos. Odell Beckham versus the Chiefs. The Chiefs are 0-15-1 in the last week one opponents, and they're playing Patrick Mahomes. And the team that got, dis not destroyed, but Brady made them look very bad in the Super Bowl. So I'm sure... Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are going to come out for blood, and sadly, the Browns are going to be the team to suffer, so just don't start Odell Beckham, and, not, and I can't believe I'm saying that because Odell has been so good since he's been on the Giants, and he went over to the Browns. He's had a few down years, but Odell is still one of the best receivers in the league, but like I said, if you have better options, sit Odell. And Kenny Galladay, Kenny Galladay is a guy, he went over from the Detroit Lions to 
the New York Giants, and Kenny Galladay, you know, he's one of those guys, he just seems to never be able to stay healthy, and I love Kenny Galladay, and it's nothing against him, and he's a dude, and he's a baller, and you know, yeah, but I just don't want guys that are injury, and if he gets out, and he gets taken out of the game in the first or second quarter, and you're sitting there, and you're like, damn it, now I got this guy on the on my team, he's on my starting lineup, and he's not playing now, and it's just one of those things, I'm really worried about his injuries, and you know, Daniel Jones versus the Broncos isn't going to be good, because that Broncos defense is still very good, and I think with Vic Fangio, they're still going to be a great defense, and they're going to get a lot of sacks and some turnovers from Daniel Jones, I guarantee that. So sit Evan Ingram and oh I'm sorry sit Kenny Galladay but also sit sit Evan sit Evan Ingram I want to mention that because he was my tight end sit of the week it's Evan Ingram from the New York Giants I just don't trust any Giants this week so if you have a better option at tight end go even I mean go out and maybe get like a Cole Clement if you need if you weren't able to get the top three. Maybe you were able to get Mark Andrews, TJ Hawkinson. Maybe you were able to sneak a Kyle Pitts in there. There's so much, There are some better tight ends out there. So please don't start having Ingram because you're going to regret it this week. Also, sit Jared Cook versus the Washington football team. Jared Cook is just one of those guys. I want to see what happens. And Washington, Washington's fo Washington football team's defense is a really good team. And they're only going to get better this year because they are one year in. They were a really young team last year. So just don't start Jared, Go Jared Cook because you can find somebody else and somebody better. Like I said, Kyle Pitts is a name that we're going to mention all season. And I wouldn't be surprised next week if he isn't one of the top 10 performances that we're talking about. Especially if that game gets out of hand and if Matt Ryan throws a bunch of touchdowns to Calvin Ridley. I could definitely see Kyle Pitts get in one. The defense you need to sit this week, I talked about it a little bit earlier about how, you know, the Chiefs are playing the Browns. Do not start the Browns defense. The Browns defense is a team, you know, they're going to play some good teams and they're going to have their weeks to be good and they're going to go off. Miles Garrett is going to have their thing and they're going to do some great things this year. But versus Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, you should never start the Bronco or the Browns defense and just don't start whoever the Chiefs play because please don't think that Patrick Mahomes is not going to have a good season or gonna, he's going to be like or he's going to be like how he was in the Super Bowl because remember he didn't have an offensive line and they did kind of rebuild that and they're getting some guys back that didn't play last season so just don't start the Browns defense if you were thinking about in a quarterback league and you know in a in a two defense league a two quarterback league whatever it is just don't start the Browns defense, and yeah. But now that we have talked about the starts and sits of the week, let's talk about the guys that you can start over all of the people I told you to sit. So the streams of the week is the first guy I want to talk about. He's a quarterback. It's time for a revenge game for Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold came over to the Carolina Panthers from the New York Jets, this past offseason, and now Sam Darnold gets a chance to show his old team on why it wasn't a good idea to get rid of him and draft Zach Wilson. We are also going to see the rookie Zach Wilson face off against Sam Darnold, so that's going to be a really cool matchup to watch in week one, but I definitely think you should start Sam Darnold if you have a quarterback you're worried about, if you weren't able to get a guy like Patrick Mahomes. Josh Allen, Lamar, Brady, Rodgers, all those guys. If you waited too long because you stocked up on a better position or a bit or an, or not a better position or other position, then start Sam Darnold this week and feel confident that he will at least give you 25 plus points because I I have a feeling he's going to be a top five, the to top ten quarterback this week because there's just something about revenge games that make teams go off and make guys want to show their other team that dang you shouldn't have got rid of me. So, the next stream of the week for me, it's Kurt Cousins from the Minnesota Vikings. Kurt Cousins had a really good season last year, and you know, he, he's always up and down, but the emergence of Justin Jefferson breaking out as the number one receiver in Minnesota, he's going to have a really good season this year, and yes, they did lose Irv Smith Jr., or yeah, they did lose Irv Smith Jr. for a while to the season, and it's going to be a big loss for the Vikings, but they still have Dalvin Cook, they got Justin Jefferson... 
they they're gonna be okay. So if you need a stream another streaming quarterback this week, start Kirk Cousins versus the Bengals because the Bengals is, is also another defense that is not very good and the Bengals secondary is just awful. So now let's talk about two running backs because this is where it kind of gets not tricky. But, you know, people in drafts always try to go out and get two top running backs. And I tried to do that. I got Derrick Henry and James Robinson in both of my leagues so far. I have one more draft on Wednesday, tomorrow. But if you people are still drafting like me, then take some of these names and draft them because you might be able to get them in later rounds because that's what I might do. And I might take some of these guys in later rounds because you just don't know what's going to happen. But the running backs I want you to stream this week, it's Damian Harris and Ronald Jones for, for the running backs. Damian Harris versus the Dolphins. The running back for the Patriots, you know, the Patriots lost Sony Michelle to the Rams, and that opened the door for Damian Harris. And with Mac Jones at quarterback, I think he'll do a lot of checkdowns. And Damian Harris, especially in PPR leagues, is going to be a guy that could score a lot of points, even if it's half point, full point, whatever it may be, depending on what your scoring is. It's going to be one of those things that Damian Harris could be very valuable for this week and weeks going forward. Ronald Jones. Ver, Ver, Ronald Jones, sorry, I keep messing up. Ronald Jones versus the Cowboys on Thursday night is a really good streaming running back that you could p think about starting in a flex or an RB2, depending on what you drafted in. But, you know, the Cowboys defense could be very good. They could be very bad, but he's got Tom Brady. And Ronald Jones is always good to get in the end zone. And yes, they still have Leonard Fournette, but in PPR standard leagues, you need a running back. Go start Ronald Jones. Now for the wide receivers that you need to stream this week. And I talked about him. I talked about one of the guys a little bit earlier, Brandon Cooks. If you really, really need a wide receiver, I would start him because honestly, like I mentioned earlier, he is the only guy I would really trust in the Texans offense or defense, in my opinion. The other receiver that you could start or you could stream this week is a guy that, you know, many people not, might not be thinking about. You know, Michael Thomas got put on the pup list. He's probably going to be out four to six weeks. And, you know, they have a new quarterback in Jameis Winston. They still have Alvin Kamara. But Marquez Callaway is a wide receiver that everybody needs to watch out. If you haven't drafted yet, try to get him in later rounds. If you have, go pick him up. If you didn't, I was able to get him in one of my leagues because with Michael Thomas out, Jameis Winston is going to have need to need to have somebody to throw through, throw to. And with them facing the Packers this week, I think it is only going to be good for Jameis Winston to throw the ball up because Rodgers is coming off a phenomenal season and you know he's going to come out. He said it's the last dance with him and Devontae Adams like we mentioned a little bit earlier and you know those are just rumors about the last dance. I don't know if they're true. It might be. It might not. Whatever. But start Marquez Callaway this week if you need a streamer as a wide receiver a flex because he's going to go off and he's going to have a really good game and hey that's what you need in week one because if these guys go off and have good games I'm all about it. But now let's talk about the tight ends because like we talked about, the tight ends are the ones that are tricky. You know, running backs, you could you could always find a running back off the waiver wire. Like last year, James Robinson was a waiver wire wonder. We could find guys like Damian Harris. There's a bunch of running backs and wide receivers in the NFL, but tight ends are one of those that we've always talked about. Like I mentioned earlier, and we talk about tight ends a lot all the time, but it's hard because if you don't get Waller, Kittle, or Kelsey, or even Andrews, it's hard to trust a tight end because they're so up and down. Some guys get hurt. Some guys, you know, it's whatever happens in the NFL, it's crazy. The NFL is crazy. Everything happens. It's it just, yeah. But the two tight ends I want you to trust this week, and if you need a tight end to stream, it's Tyler Higby versus the Bears and Noah Fant versus the Giants from the Denver Broncos. Tyler Higby with Jared Goff. Uh, Jared Goff, you know, with TJ Hawkinson, made TJ Hawkinson a really good player and a guy that you would really want to start in the NFL this year. But I think that Tyler Higby is going to be one of those guys that have a really good season and he could be a streamer from weeks to come and years, or not, I'm sorry, not years, for weeks to come and throughout the whole season. So Tyler Higby versus the Bears, as much as, as, much as I hate it, I think that Matt Stafford will be looking to Higby. So start Higby if you need a streamer or tight end. I mentioned to Noah Fant, Teddy Bridgewater is now the quarterback 
for the Denver Broncos. And Noah Fan, I don't, I think, is only going to benefit from that. And I think him and Bridgewater are going to have a really good connection. And versus the Giants, that secondary hasn't been very good. The cornerbacks aren't very good. And the Giants team is just a disaster, in my opinion. Especially if Barkley starts off slow, everybody's going to be freaking out because did they bring him back too soon? Even though he had all those months to rehab and he says he's almost he's good to go i just don't trust anybody on the giants the only person i do trust is saquon and that's just because he's saquon barkley saquon barkley's a beast so if you need a tight end to stream this week stream noah fan and the last stream of the week i want to talk about is the defense defenses are the always the thing unless you get like the buccaneers or like i mentioned the broncos they have a really good three-week stretch you're always going to be wanting to stream quarterbacks because, or not quarterbacks, I'm sorry, receiver, not, re oh my God, people, I'm so sorry, not receivers, defenses are, are a thing that you want to stream every single week because you want to play the matchups. There's going to be a week that teams are going to, that team's going to face the Jets. And if Zach Wilson starts throwing interceptions, then hey, start the team that faces the Jets. That's what I like to do. I like to pick on one team and I just like to pick the defense that faces that one team every single week. Because, you know, a lot of people might not think about it, but sometimes the defense can score 20 to 30 points. And say if one of your stars has a really off week, that could only benefit you and you could literally win because of your defense. So think about it because your defenses are really, really important. And it's just one of those things, you know, you might not think about. But in the end, the defenses are the thing to watch out for. So there's your streams for the week. Sorry, I got a little messed up there for a second, but we got back on track. So... If you need some streams, go look, and those are all your streams for week one of the NFL fantasy season. But now, let's talk about my top five flex options for week one. And my top five is going to be number five, I'm sorry, number five is going to be Damian Harris. I just mentioned him. If you need a stream, put him in your flex versus Miami because I think Mac Jones is going to dump it down to him. And like I said, half point, full point, whatever it may be. He's going to be a monster in the PPR formats and in standard leagues, especially if he can get into the end zone. Top number four stream of the week, it's Brandon Ayuk versus Detroit. Brandon Ayuk had a phenomenal breakout season, and he scored 20-plus points in about three or three out of four of the last weeks of the season last week. And if you had him, he probably helps you win a fantasy championship, or maybe he helps you come in second or third, or just be able to come back in the season. He had a really good season, so if you're able to grab him, put him in your flex versus Detroit because he's going to have a good game. And if Jimmy Garoppolo could look like the Jimmy Garoppolo that was on the team when they went to the Super Bowl a few years ago, that's only going to help Ayuk a lot better. Because remember, Jimmy Garoppolo was out last year, and they really were going through quarterbacks like up and down. And Brandon Ayuk was looking like Allen Robinson out there with all types of different quarterbacks, and he was still producing. My number three flex option of the week, it's Jerry Judy versus the New York Giants. I mentioned Teddy Bridgewater for Noah Fant, and I think Teddy Bridgewater is going to elevate Jerry Judy's game a lot better, and I think Jerry Judy is going to have a great sophomore season. And versus the Giants, I talked about their cornerbacks and their safeties and their backfield. Just everything with the Giants is a disaster. So start Jerry Judy versus the Giants because Jerry Judy, I guarantee you, he's going to get a touchdown. My number two flex option of the week is Antonio Brown versus the Cowboys. And you're saying Antonio Brown, who? That guy that was on the Steelers that we were drafting in the first and second round a few years ago? Yeah, that guy. That guy went from going from being on the Steelers, he went to the Raiders, he went to the Patriots, he went to all these different teams, and last year he went to the Buccaneers with Tom Brady. And you know, when he was with the Patriots with Tom Brady, he lived with Brady and they and they did a lot and he was able to help and Antonio considers Brady a really good friend. So last year when he went to the Buccaneers, Antonio didn't have a really, really great season. You know, he didn't put up the numbers like he was putting up in Pittsburgh, but the numbers were still good. And Antonio Brown is one of those guys that I think this game is going to be an absolute barn burner. At least I hope it is because starting off on Thursday night, I really hope that we just see a really, really good football game. And hopefully it's, hopefully it's like 40, 42, 35 because that's what I want to see. So start Antonio Brown. And if you need a flex option, a two flex league, whatever it may be, because you're not going to be disappointed. And now for my number one flex option of the week, it is going to be Devontae Smith versus the Atlanta Falcons. I talked about him. I put him in my starts for the week. And I did 
I do think that the Falcons and the Eagles game is going to be an absolute killer. It's going to be absolute fantasy gold. And I think that Devon Day Smith, I'm going to say another bold prediction because we're going to get into my bold predictions a little later, but I think Devonte Smith could easily be a top three wide receiver, especially if Jalen Hurts just throws a couple bombs to him and that's all you need because in fantasy, fantasy football, a touchdown and receiving yards is phenomenal, especially on like an 80 yard touchdown play. So I'll be down for that. So start Devonte Smith because he's going to have a great week one and you ain't going to be disappointed. So now let's get into the games that are going to be gold because I just mentioned it. And if you were with me last year, I did this. I'm going to tell you the games that are going to be fantasy gold to the point where you want to start these guys that play on this team and just you want to start these guys on both teams because it's going to be a banger. It's going to be back and forth. There's going to be so many scoring and that's what you want in fantasy football. You want these games to be high scoring unless obviously if you have like the defense and you don't want to do that. But usually in this, I don't pick the teams with bad defenses. So the first game that I think is going to be fantasy gold, it's going to be the Bills versus the Steelers. This game, I think the Bills are going to come out. They're going to be guns a-blazing. Allen's going to be thrown to Diggs. Allen's going to be thrown to Knox, Beasley. Singletary's going to get in the game. I think Nige Harris, the running back for the Steelers, we haven't really talked about him too much, but he's a guy for a running back. If you drafted him, he's going to be a really, really good RB2. And you're not going to be disappointed because I think he's going to be the Jonathan Taylor of this season. So start the Steelers. Start all of the Steelers because I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. And, of course, you're going to start Allen, Diggs, Singletary, all those guys. So start all the Bills and Steelers. The second game that is going to be fantasy gold. I've talked about it a little bit today. It's the Packers and Saints. Start Aaron Rodgers, Devonta Adams, Aaron Jones, Robert Tanyan. Start Jam Jameis Winston if you're in a two-deep quarterback league, 12-team league. Start Alvin Kamara, of course. I told you to start Mar Marquez Callaway. It's going to be an absolute banger. And if Aaron Rodgers, even if he does throw three or four touchdowns, that means the Saints are going to have to come back, and that just means garbage time. Everybody knows what garbage time is. It's when the teams are down and out, but they just keep throwing in and they just keep racking up fantasy points. So what if Alvin Kamara gets a, a touchdown in the fourth quarter if they're down? So what? It still counts. Garbage time is one of the best things in fantasy football. So start all your Packers and Saints. It could either it could go the opposite way. Rodgers could be throwing up, up fields up and down and trying to come back. Either way, just start everybody. And I talked about this game a lot. It's the Eagles and Falcons. And, you know, I told you to start Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, Miles Sanders. I've talked about Matt Ryan a little bit. I said you need to start, obviously, Calvin Ridley. If you need a wide receiver, deep wide receiver, go, go out and get Russell Gage. Because since Julio isn't there, he's probably going to be the number two. In my opinion, they also got Kyle Pitts. So I just think that this game is going to be an absolute shootout. Jalen Hurts, like I said, I think Devontae Smith's going to have two or three touchdowns. I think Matt Ryan's going to have to throw it up and down the field like he always does. The Falcons always seem not to have a bad week one, but I know there's been a lot of few. Uh, there's been a few weeks in the past week ones that the Falcons have been down and out and they need to come back and, you know, whatever it might be. I think it was a few years ago that actually Ryan Fitzmagic, Ryan Fitzpatrick, the quarterback now for the Washington football team came back with the Buccaneers before Brady was on the team. Yeah, Buccaneers fans, there was a Buccaneers team before Tom Brady, you know, you know, if you didn't jump on the bandwagon last year. But anyway, so just start all your Eagles and Falcons and just that game is going to be an absolute killer. So enough about the games that are going to be gold. Let's get in to my three guarantees and my bold predictions for the week. Before I go, and then you don't have to listen to me, and then we can get on with fantasy football, and it's going to be a good week, but I need to give you all this information so I can help you win your fantasy football leagues, and so then we can celebrate with some champagne at the end of the season, because now that I'm on YouTube, we're going to see everything. We're going to be bringing out bottles of champagne, and we're just going to be celebrating throughout the whole season, but... My three guarantees of the week, I think the Broncos are going to be the top defense. I've talked about a lot about the Broncos, and with Daniel Jones, I just see him having a lot of turnovers, sacks, 
I mean, you always get points for sacks, and you always want to look for those teams that have really bad offensive lines, just like the Rams. If you have the Rams, start the Rams versus the Bears, because as much as I love my Chicago Bears, the Rams' defense is going to feast off of that offensive line, and if they can't protect Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton's going to be on the ground, and the Red Rifle is just not going to do very good in Chicago. So, start the Broncos' defense, because they're going to be a top defense of the week. My my second guarantee, my second guarantee of the week, Trevor Lawrence is going to throw his first touchdown. And, you know, this might be like just a whatever. But, you know, sometimes these rookies struggle and sometimes it takes a little bit. But I think that Trevor Lawrence is going to come out this week and he is going to show why he was the number one pick and why everybody need needed to know and why they should know why he was the number one pick. Sorry about my mic, guys. It fell down. I fixed it. We're all good. But, yeah, Trevor Lawrence is going to score his first touchdown. It might even be rushing. Who knows? He might not throw it. But either way... He's going to get it. He's going to do his thing. And he's either going to throw or rush for his touchdown. So, yeah. My third guarantee of the week, Brady is going to throw four touchdowns. The GOAT, Tom Brady, is the MVP. He's the greatest of all time. He's going in the Hall of Fame. He's got six, seven rings. Who knows? I lost track. The man's trying to build hands or rings. And he's just trying to have so many rings that he could sell them. I don't know what he's trying to do. Who knows when the man's going to retire. I've been watching this guy since... 2001 2002 he's crazy he's so good he's the goat he's mvp at brady tom brady he's gonna throw four touchdowns on thursday night and the cowboys defense is gonna look lost and they're not gonna know what to do but now about now that i give you my three guarantees of the week let's talk about my bold predictions my first bold prediction i want to talk about is the rookies are going to outperform some of the stars I'm going to say that, like I said, I mentioned Devontae Adams, so I th- or not Devontae Adams, Devontae Smith from the Philadelphia Eagles, but I think Devontae Smith is going to outperform somebody like a Devontae Adams, like an A.J. Brown, like a Justin Jefferson, and everybody is going to be like, where did this guy come from? But remember, he came up in the draft and the Philadelphia Eagles traded up to get him, so there's obviously a reason why he's on the team, and there's a reason why they did that. So he's uh, he's going to get a lot of production, so just make sure that you do, I just, if you have a rookie, start him, because you never know what could happen, and you don't want to have that rookie on your bench and being like, dang, on Sunday night, when you see the Falcons and Eagles game go off and Devontae Smith have three touchdowns. So, speaking of rookies, I think Zach Wilson will be the top, one of the top five scorers in the NFL. And, you know, this might be shocking with the Jets, and, you know, the Jets don't have a lot of really good options, but they did go out and get Corey Davis from the Tennessee Titans, they have a rookie in Michael Carter. I don't know if he's going to start this week, but the Jets are obviously going to have to come back too because the Jets are going to be a team that they're going to get down and out. So I think Zach Wilson is going to be having a lot of fantasy garbage time points. And unless you're in a quarterback, in your if unless you're in a two QB league or if you're in like a twelve or sixteen sixteen twelve or sixteen team league, you might not be starting Wilson. But if you need a quarterback and you need to maybe take a shot on Wilson because who knows what he can do versus the Panthers. And that Panthers defense, it's not like the Panthers defense when Cam was on the team. So I got a little bit of faith in Justin, not Justin, I'm sorry. I got a little bit of faith in Zach Wilson. I was trying to say Justin Wilson. I don't know what I'm thinking of. And my last bold prediction is someone is going to be a week one 50 point bagger. Someone is going to score 50 points in week one, and they're going to lead their team to a victory, and there's going to be nobody else that needs to do as much because that guy putting up 50 points is going to be an absolute killer. So I, it might be Henry, it might be Kamara, it might be Cook, it might be C-Mac. I don't know who it's going to be, but I guarantee you, and yet, or I don't guarantee you, I'm sorry, it's just a bold prediction. I bold predict that someone will score 50 points this week, in the first week of the NFL fantasy football season. I am so happy that the NFL fantasy football season is back. Week one is almost upon us. We got less than two days. It's almost here. The Buccaneers and Cowboys are going to be starting us off on Thursday night. It's going to be awesome. And then week one this Sunday, we got matchups like the Saints and Packers. We got the Bills, the Bears and Rams on Sunday night. We got the Ravens and 
Ra the Ra the Ravens and Raiders on Monday night. We have so many great games. It's going to be an awesome week one. I hope all this information helped everybody for week one. Make sure you set your fantasy lineups before Thursday. Depending on what type of league you're in, your league might set your lineup on Thursday. Depending on what, you know, whoever it is. But make sure your lineups are set. Make sure you listen to this information because... You know, you want to start off good and you want to make sure you get some bragging rights in week one. Because if you start off slow, I'm not saying you can't make it. But it's really hard to dig yourself out of a hole, especially in fantasy football. And it's better off just to start off good. So, everybody, go listen to all your boy Tino's information. He's going to be here all season long to help you win you your week, win you your league. We're going to be taking home the trophy. We're going to be taking home the championship. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a banger. I hope everybody enjoys week one. I hope everybody will listen, watch, subscribe. Remember to subscribe. Remember to smash that like button. Help your boy Tino out. Go follow me at TinoTime1996 on Twitter. TinoTime on Instagram. Also, if you haven't, go follow Tino's Time Wrestling. I do wrestling. If you haven't noticed my pops in the background, I seem to get more and more action figures as the time goes on. Go check out all of my social medias. Go check out all of my old sh all of my old shows because your boy Tino isn't gonna stop with football. Isn't gonna stop with wrestling. He's gonna be here all year to help you with fantasy football season, and it's gonna be awesome. Hopefully, you guys know what that means if you watch it. But if not, let's just enjoy the fantasy football season. And fantasy football season is back, baby. So until. Next Tuesday, when I give you a week one recap and we go over the, all the guys that helped you win you your week and we'll get ready for week two and I'll be introducing a couple new segments. We'll be going over waiver wire targets. We'll be going over the injuries that happened. Hopefully not too many happened. Hopefully all the starts and straight, all the starts and sits and streamers I gave you worked. We'll be going over my humble brag, some of my bads, you know, my bad. I can't get everything right. I'm just trying to give you all the information that I think will help you guys. So until next Tuesday, when we do everything for week one and get you ready for week two, this is your boy Tino signing out.